thank you. Let's give the Lord a great big hand here today. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jim and uh, Giovanna and the wonderful servants that are serving the Lord here together in this great city. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. It's been many years since I've actually preached again in, in Sheffield, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. How many of you are thrilled to be in Sheffield? Amen. And let's give the Lord a great hand for what God is doing right here in this city, in this great church. Amen. And thank God for the uh, amazing pastors you have. Yes, uh, it, it had been too long that uh, we had not been connected, but it's great to be connected in covenant. Amen. Everybody say covenant, covenant. connection, and contribution. You see, because there's a reciprocal anointing that we need to draw on because there's no lack in God. Amen. The body of Christ has no lack. God has set in the body apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. God has set you and I in the body. That's the family. Amen. And in the family, there's no lack. And uh, that's why there's a, a reciprocal anointing. You know, that we, 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 we give that to one another and it increases us in the purposes of God. Amen. Increases us. And I believe the Holy Spirit is the increaser. Can I get an amen? amen. So I'm very uh, honored and blessed to be back in Sheffield. Uh, uh, I thank God for this opportunity. I, I, I'm, it's interesting. I will be traveling in, in just about a week's time to Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, then in Port Elizabeth and Cape Town. Anyone from South Africa here? Oh, praise God. So there's praise the name of Jesus. Amen. You know very well when I go to South Africa, I've got to change the accent a little bit so they understand me. Amen. But I can't wait. That's going to be amazing. And then straight after that, I come back. I'm also the, the senior pastor of our church network in Watford with my wife who's from Argentina. Anyone from Argentina here today? Algunas personas hablan en español, levanta la mano. Algunos de España, ¡eh, hermano, de dónde sos? ¡Gloria a Dios! Hay uno. Su nación, ¿cuál es? ¡Ecuador! ¿Qué te parece, Ecuador? I've preached in Quito, Ecuador. Great place, amen. So that's amazing. This is a church of nations, amen. And uh, then from there I go to India. Hallelujah. And uh, I'll be preaching in five cities. And I'll be preaching again in Pastor D. Mohan's church in Chennai. Very hot city, hot curry, hot city, hot God, hot anointing. Amen. And a hot outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And so pray for me because, they, you know, they have many services. You know, you have one service and then another service and then one more and then another one and then another one and... Hallelujah, and yet one more, just throw it in, you know. <laughs> but it's awesome, and I believe, uh, because D. Mohan, Pastor D, is a mighty man of God, his son uh, Chadwick, how many of you are from Chennai? The, the, these mighty folk, you know what, the ch he told me, D. Mohan, they started that church with 11 people under a tree. Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, 11 personas abajo un árbol empezamos la iglesia y ahora es impresionante oh, but you don't speak Spanish do you? <laughs> but that's the only Spanish I know listen 11 people and they fasted and prayed can I get an amen? amen. so I want you to turn to the book of Amos this morning the book of Amos I, you know I, I know that there's been phenomenal ministries come through this church and, I, and I'm just honored to be a, a uh, an, an opportunity to preach in this city, uh, in this church, because I believe God ha has a word for this church, and, and God has a word for, for this uh, mighty uh, apostle that God is raising up in this city for Sheffield. And so, uh, you know, I don't want to mess about. I want to get to the word of God and then let the Lord release what he wants to release. Can I get an Amen. And so while you're turning to Amos chapter 9, let me just make mention, uh, if you want to help me in, in our mission, we have various CDs you can pick up at the end of the service. This is a, an album that I recorded, a professional album, a pre-release. It's available. And there are some teaching CDs. How many of you know, sometimes you can hear a preaching CD can change your life. Amen. How many of you know that? 
Invest in good preaching, teaching. Can I get an amen? amen. Turn off your television and your radio and, and come under anointed teaching and preaching. It'll change your life. And there's a whole list of titles. I'll just tell you about one which I think is important this morning. It's the, the message I preached uh, about 15 years ago, changed people's lives all over the world called Dropped But Still Dreaming. Just touch a neighbor and say, dropped, but still dreaming. And that is the message of Mephibosheth. Have you ever heard of him? Who ever heard of Mephibosheth? He was dropped and became a cripple, but you didn't know it. So he was dropped, but he was still dreaming. Because at the table of the Lord, you didn't know he was a cripple. Hands up if you've ever been dropped. Then you need to, you need to get that message because you can still keep dreaming. God is going to do something amazing. Can I get an amen? Let's go to Amos, our text this morning. And I want to share a short message on four perennial truths that never change. Repeat that back to me, church. Four perennial truths that never change. And also we welcome our broadcast audience all over the world this morning. I believe this is going out to India. It's going out to the nations. Also from our church in Watford, when we preach, we go out to the nations. Can I get an amen? amen. And so whoever's joining us, this is for you today. God is going to do something incredible. As we get ready, let's lift our hands into the presence of God and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, the assignment on this word this morning for this church, in the name of Jesus and those watching around the world, would you accelerate the grace and the purposes of God to see great, great grace come upon the church, great grace come upon the servants of God, and Father, the grace of fasting and prayer would be released again into our churches, into our cities, to birth the greatest revival and awakening in the history of the world. Lord, there have been revivals, there have been awakenings, but the one that's about to come is going to be the biggest and the best. And so we pray this morning, come on, lift your hands and pray with me. Say, Father, this morning, I want to be a part of that. I want to take my place in that. I want to make sure that I receive the anointing today to become a warrior, a winner, a worshiper, a watchman, a worker, for the, for the purposes of God that together we can see a major awakening and revival again in the United Kingdom right here in Sheffield, the heart of the UK and around the world in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, Amen and Amen. Go to Amos chapter 9 this morning. And I want to read a couple of verses to us. Hallelujah. And as we look at verse 9, For surely I will command and will sift the house of Israel among the nations. Then as we come down to verse 13, from 11, On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. Everybody say the tabernacle of David. See, the tabernacle of David is to do with praise and worship. The 365 anointing, everybody say 365 anointing, that God is restoring to the church of worship, everybody say worship, intercession, and power evangelism around the clock, without ceasing. Somebody say without ceasing. God is restoring this into the earth. That's why this morning it was wonderful and powerful to see such worship touching the heavenlies. Amen? But it goes on to say... In verse 13, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed, and the mountains shall drip with sweet wine and the hills will flow with it. And I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. Can I get an amen this morning? I'm going to take my jacket off because I feel the heat already. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of you understand that verse of Scripture? Lift your hands. How many of you don't understand that verse of Scripture? That's good. That's honest. You know, I believe the acceleration of what God is going to do in the last days will be so powerful in terms of harvest. If I said harvest, everybody say hallelujah. When I say harvest, you say hallelujah. 
Because God is saving people in an incredible way. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And so the plowman is going to overtake the reaper. In other words, you cannot plow quick enough for the acceleration of the purposes of God. Can I get an amen? If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, it says, God has set in the church first apostles, prophets, evangelists, so forth, different ministries. These are set by God to begin to accelerate the purposes of God. Everybody lift your hands around about now and say, Father, bring restoration to the church. Bring restoration to the church of Christ worldwide. Restore apostles. Restore prophets. Restore evangelists. Restore teachers. Restore all the ministry. Restore the glory to your church and accelerate your purposes in Jesus' mighty name. Can I get an amen? And so in these last days, there will be an activation of the book of Acts all over again. Everybody say, book of Acts, baby. Book of Acts. God is going to do it again. He's done it before and he's going to do it again. Do you believe that? So we have to make sure we are not good evangelical Christians that are cessationists. How many of you know what a cessationist is? A cessationist says, well, there's no miracles today. The apostles are dead. There's no, there's, no, there's, there's no miracles, there's no power. Who's ever heard of that? Touch a neighbor beside you say, we're not cessationists. I want you, I want you to know the best is still to come. Amen. Tell a neighbor, say, the best is still to come. Why? Because God... God is in the business of restoring what was lost. And each, each one is important. Right here in this area, you've, got some, you've had some of the greatest evangelists and ministers who've changed the world. Smith Wigglesworth. Amen. The nation of England. Whitfield. Yes. Wesley. Yes. When I go to South Africa, I'll be working with Jimmy Crompton. He's almost in his 80s now. He, he, he grew up with John G. Lake. How many of you know what God's done before, he's going to do again? God wants to send revival. God wants to send revival to Sheffield. Revival to this church. Revival to my church. Revival to every church to bring an awakening. And an awakening is something way more powerful than just a couple of lively meetings. So the four perennial truths are simply this. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, quote it with me, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, Then God says, I will not hear from heaven. I will not forgive their sin. I will not heal their land. Oh, thank you, dear. I'm glad someone knows their Bible. (laughs) Praise the Lord. What does it say there? What does it say? It says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Amen, Amen, man. I don't know what's going on, but I feel like some sort of Welsh thing coming on me. (laughs) I don't know why. But that, listen, the four perennial truths have never changed. If you will fast, humble yourself. You see, our prayer life should be more than, Oh Lord, I just pray that I get a parking space in Sainsbury's. Lord, I just pray for the big four. Yes, a nice big house, a nice big car, a nice big wife, and a nice big job. Not necessarily in that order. Come on now, touch a neighbor. Listen, our prayer life has got to be more than just, oh, give me a parking space today. Can I get an amen? He'll give you a parking space. He'll give you a good wife. Amen. i got an amazing wife. I love her. She's a, you know what? If you, p- people see my wife and they know it's a sacrifice for me to go, go and travel all around the world. Some ministers, they can't wait to travel all around the world. Mine's amazing. She's beautiful. They say, why would you leave her behind? I said, now you know the power of sacrifice. And four amazing children. Amen. 
The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, what does it say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Amen. Hands up now if you know God's called you into an amazing life. Come on, he's, 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 he, come on, say after me. I'm called, appointed, anointed, and blessed to be a blessing. Say, I'm blessed in marriage. I'm blessed in money. I'm blessed in ministry. I'm blessed in purpose. I'm blessed in message. I'm blessed in mission. I am blessed. I'm blessed with the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. And these four perennial truths have never changed. If you will put them into place, they will work. Amen. Amen. If we looked at Isaiah chapter 26 this morning, uh, you would find verses there of the church in travail, birthing, but birthing nothing but wind. How many of you understand that's almost a picture prophetically? I, I'm not going to read it this morning because I've given our key text. I quote a lot. Ever since I was saved at 19 years of age, I've memorized chapters and verses of Scripture. So when I preach, I preach extemporaneously. Somebody said, what does that mean? I said, I don't know, but it's in the dictionary. But, but, but what that means is I've preached from the flow of what God put in my heart from memorized Scripture so that it's coming from the heart. Isaiah 29, 13 says, there's a people that honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But it says in there, the church hasn't birthed anything. Now, how many mamas have given birth? There's only three of you. We need more pregnant women in this church. I was going to say, how many fathers? And there's not, you see, there you go. There's a few fathers. I was there. I was there for the birth of all four. My wife's amazing. The first child she pushed out, I was there. Listen, I had gloves on, a cape on. I, I said, give me some of that stuff. <laughs> While she, and, 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 and I was saying, honey, push, push. She's such a woman of God, she started preaching to the doctor. She said, do you know Jesus? It was a wonderful Chinese doctor. I said, honey, 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 keep pushing. <laughs> you keep pushing. I'll share the gospel with him. Now, how many of you know the church is poised at the final push? Everybody say P-U-S-H. Push. Pray until something happens. Because we're not going to birth wind. We're not going to birth nothing. We are going to birth an apostolic accelerate. There are churches in this church to be planted. There are leaders to be raised. There are nations to be taken. Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Who's asking for a nation, let alone a parking space? I ask God in New Zealand for nations. So the last 40 years I've crisscrossed the globe. Preaching non-stop. You thought I forgot about my wife? I didn't. While she was pushing out our first child, my job was to, to dab her down because she was sweating. So at one stage, I covered up her eyes. She said, I can't see. I said, you don't want to see, honey. Keep pushing. <laughs> and the final note she, she hit was, was quite high. You know, I'm, I'm a singer. I can hit a few notes, you know. Hey, 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 hey. But my wife, the, the last note she hit was like, hey, hey. And all the glass and everything started shaking in the building. And as our child was born, Born, we held, we held up all four and dedicated them right there. Said, Lord, these children are for you. They will be carriers of revival, carriers of the awakening. Lift your hands and pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a carrier. I want to be part of the Amos 
nine anointing of the plowman overtaking the reaper. Father, put a warrior's anointing in me to pray. You, you can't pray without a warrior's anointing. For the Bible says in Matthew eleven twelve, 12, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So if you're very passive about praying, well, I'll pray if I feel like it and I won't pray if I don't, then you'll never pray. Lift your hands and say, Father, release in me a warrior's anointing. Release in me a winner's anointing. Release in me a watchman anointing. That means to fast. It means to get up in the night. It means to pray around the city. I've been praying over nations for years and years and years. I've asked God for nations. That's what the Bible says. And he will do it. Can I get an amen? Who's asking for Great Britain? Who's asking for a great awakening? Who's asking for a great revival? Come on, church. You can do this. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor. Say, you can do this. And Isaiah chapter 66, 7 and 8. If I ever preach and you don't get 30 Bible quotes and references, come and see me. The Bible says when Zion travailed, she brought forth. That's a picture of the church. We are the final, ultimate instrument left in the earth to birth the glory of God over the nations. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. And in that place, the Lord says, I'll give peace. Oh, lift your hands one more time. You know what? I know you, by the end of it, you say, I've had a workout. Yes, you have. Lift your hands and say, Father God, I can't hear this message. I got to get in it. I got to start to do it. I got to start to fast. I got to start to pray. I need to seek God like, like never before. I need those four perennial truths operating in my life. Lord, first of all, I'm going to fast because it will humble me. Lord, it won't change you, but it will change me. Father God, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to seek your face not your hand not your provision your face I'm going to seek your face I'm going to pray I'm going to turn from wicked ways I know you'll hear from heaven I know you'll forgive my sin and the sin of this nation and you'll heal this land and the greatest revival in the history of the UK will be birthed somebody give an amen hallelujah hallelujah Yeah, I'm sweating. That's right. See that? If you come close, I'll flick some of that onto you. You get some anointing. Thank God I'm not Jesus this morning. Imagine Jesus. He went up to people and spat in the ground. If he wanted healing, he went... <laughs> took a bit of mud out and said, here, have some of that. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe this. There are vessels here of sovereignty. Nobody's too old. Nobody's that, you know, I was at a meeting recently preaching in America and, and a young guy stood up, you know, full of, you know, young guy. I never used to think I'd ever be an old guy, but listen, I'm the oldest teenager in the world. I have value. There's silver in my hair, gold in my teeth and gas in my stomach. There ain't no stones in my kidneys. I'm valuable. Can I get an Amen. He said, if you're over 50, you're done. No, come on, lift your hands and say the best is still to come. God is looking for revival instruments. God is going to raise up men and women of honor, of glory, of power, carriers of the four perennial. What's the word perennial? It means continuous. Because God doesn't want the revival to peter out. Now, if I spoke about the Welsh revival in 1904, how many of you know what I'm talking about? If I spoke about the revival at Azusa Street in 1906, who knows what I'm talking about? You do. You've read a lot of books like me. You must be Welshman. <laughs> Mom, not man. I've got my glasses off. I can see you're a lady. <laughs> but who ever heard of Evan Roberts? 17-year-old yes. boy in Wales. And he said to his pastor one Wednesday night, give me a go. And the pastor said no. So he said, another time, pastor, can I have a go? Can I preach? And the pastor said, no. So he didn't give up. He asked again. He said, pastor, can I have a go? And the pastor said, well, what harm can he do on a Wednesday night? Let him have a go. So he had a go. What did he preach? The four perennial truths. He'd been fasting. He prayed that people would come 
to Christ, to the cross. They would turn from sin and they would live 100% committed to Christ and share the gospel with everybody. Amen. Touch your neighbor, say everybody. Amen. And who knows what happened? Two million people got saved, man. Two million people got saved. And that, 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 that same anointing then at the same time went over to Azusa Street in America. And there was a black man called Seymour, a humble man who was blind in one eye. And he lived for the glory of God. He would fast and pray. He would, you know, how many you know fasting will humble you? I mean, like, 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 like if you need to be humbled, fast. Don't let God humble you. It hurts. Amen. And, and, and you know what? He, he, he so longed for the glory of God. He'd put a box on his head and he'd come to church. Now, if I did that in my church, my church might say that's an improvement. <laughs> he didn't want anyone to see him. He was saying, so, don't look at me. Look at the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm pretty short. I've been in some places. The pulpit's so big, you can't even see me when I'm behind the pulpit. I've said to people, it could be a theophany. Don't look at me. See Jesus. Amen. Amen. But he was hungry. Somebody say hungry. Desperate for the things of God. Now, around about now, I want you to lift your hands one more time and say, Father, it's all by grace. I pray by grace. I live by grace. I'm saved by grace. I fast by grace. I sacrifice by grace. If I get into legalism, I'm going to lose the anointing on my life. And so I receive today, according to the Bible, Romans 1.5, the grace of obedience. The grace of obedience to seek you in fasting and prayer and holiness for revival. Lord, I thank you that you meet my needs, but I pray, oh God, that you would do something else in my life in my marriage in my family and in this church that will birth come on birth thousands and thousands and thousands of souls right here in Sheffield hallelujah glory to God glory to God that's what I'm about by the grace of God now many folks they say pastor when you're fasting do you get revelation I say oh yes when I'm showering and when I'm dreaming in the night, I see Kentucky Fried Chickens <laughs> flying into the heavenlies, saying, eat me. When I'm showering and I've gone through days of fasting, it takes me longer because the water has to hit me. But how many of you know desperation is a powerful motivation for God to move in your life? Lift your hands and say, God, I need the urgency and the desperation of the Spirit of God to cause me to make room for the move of God. To make room in my womb for the move of God, for the things of God, for the glory of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Say four perennial truths that never change. Can I have a keyboard player? Four perennial truths that never change. Say, number one, humble yourself. The Bible says when you humble yourself, God will exalt you in due time. First Peter 5, 6, humble yourself. I've discovered over years of fasts that if pride is in my life, God can't use me. God can do nothing. The pride of man accomplishes nothing. 1 John 2, 15 and 16 says, the pride of life, the boastful pride of life. Love not the world, nor the things that be in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's better in Spanish. No amayas al mundo ni las cosas que están en el mundo. Si alguno amar al mundo, el amor del Padre no está en él. The world, the spirit of the world, pride. We need the Spirit of God. God can't commune with a proud heart. God can't walk with the proud. Can I get an amen? Wave at me if you know that God wants to humble you. He wants to humble us because the humble will be exalted. Number two, pray. Well, how are you going to pray? Well, you could pray nice, eloquent prayers. Oh, Lord, I do pray. Lord, in this wonderful British country, 
You would do sovereign, majestic, mighty, awesome, magnanimous things. And that's great. Sounds great. But it's not. It's nonsense. It's a religious spirit. You need... You need... Put your, put your hand here. You need the fire of the baptism in the Holy Ghost so that you'll start to pray in glossolalia in the spirit like the apostle Paul that you can't even stop because you're praying mysteries unto God it's like your battery's flat you get in your car and you turn it and it won't even go but right now put your hand in here and say God recharge my spirit recharge my fire recharge my battery that I might get an anointing to begin to burn Birth children begin to birth churches begin to birth nations begin to birth revivals begin to birth awakenings they say in Wales when the awakening took place even the donkeys wouldn't work because their miners were now not going to the to the to the, the boozing houses or what do you call them the the, the, the pubs they were not going anymore, so they were, dry, they were dried out. Hallelujah. And they were speaking nicely to the donkeys. Say, donkey, move the coal. And the donkey went, e -e 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 -e. he didn't understand, man, because there was no dirty language. You go to Wales today, nothing. It's time. Lift your hands, say, it's time. It's time. It's time. Kairos time. For Esther 414 for such a time as this you and I have come into the kingdom you can be a Kairos man a Kairos woman you can step out of the times of Kronos and step into the times of Kairos you can become a birthing instrument for a move of God that's not pride that's what God wants out of your life he did not save you and I to sit in church he saved us to live a holy life. He saved us to be on fire. He saved us so that when we go, blind eyes open, cripples walk, deaf ears pop open. I see this all the time. That's normal. Stadiums fill up. Churches fill up. The glory's released. It's all Jesus. All the best is still to come. It's John chapter 2, wedding of Cana time. Touch a neighbor, say it's wedding of Cana time. God saved the best till last. He's about to turn the water into wine. He's about to cause the overflow of the Holy Ghost to begin to save the lost, heal the sick, raise the dead, raise up leaders, plant churches, take territories. That's the ministry of the apostle. Can I get an amen? How many of you know you're called into the ministry? Let me see. Because at the end of this message, I want to lay hands on you. You know, Paul said, I long to come that I might impart some spiritual gift. So you know you're called into the ministry. Now all the church lift your hands and say, we all called into full-time ministry. Full-time. Well, I don't mean necessarily preaching, but full-time ministry for the purposes of God. Whether you're a housewife, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a taxi driver, you are a full-time minister for Jesus Christ. Come on, lift your hand say, I'm a full-time minister. It's not just those that are called into the Ephesians 4 gifts. We are all full-time. Say, full-time family, full-time preaching, full-time pastoring, full-time evangelism, full-time worship, full-time intercession, full-time fire, full-time. Not part-time. This isn't my part-time occupation. For the last 40 years, I've, I've crisscrossed the globe, small or large, aeroplane after aeroplane. I'm hungry for God. It's not about my ministry. I am a throne room man. I can only live in the presence of God. That's why I seek His face. You stop seeking His face, you'll seek His face for His hand or for your ministry. But if you want to stay in the place of being useful for God, who wants to stay in the place of being useful for God, then implement these four principles today in your life. This is the secret of my life. For 40 years, I pray. For 40 years, I fast. For 40 years, I seek His face. 
For 40 years, I see God moving in nations. I, I haven't had time to tell you all of the things today because our time has gone. But I'll tell you about Uruguay. Some years ago, I was invited to preach in Uruguay, Montevideo, Otra Nacioni de Latinos. And they told me in that city of Montevideo, I said, I'm going to preach for seven nights as an evangelist. They said, you won't. I said, why is that? They said, no evangelist has ever gone past the third night. I said, why is that? They said, because the people do macumba. Tu conoces macumba, witchcraft, brucaria, chisaria, witchcraft. You know, in every city, witchcraft produces immorality. Lift your hands if you know it. Witchcraft produces immorality. And it breaks the move of God. It breaks the power of God. And in Sheffield, ain't no different to London or even where I live, Watford. Somebody said, where do you live? I said, I live Watford. You keep going down and then you come to Watford. Is where, what, where I live. So now you can come and visit me in Watford. In my three bedroom semi-detached villa. Because a man from Scotland said, oh, but that pasty has got a villa. He's got a villa. I said, I got vanilla ice cream in the fridge, but I've only got a three bedroom semi. And I was preaching in Montevideo. And on the third day, they did macumba. They killed human babies and spread the blood along the beaches. Don't be so shocked, church, while I'm speaking to you. Millions of babies are being aborted whilst I'm speaking through partial birth abortions, almost full term. I want to tell you, murder is still murder. But it's the blood that attracts the demonic that brings the spirit of witchcraft over a city. Lift your hands and pray with me right now because it's too important. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over witchcraft in Sheffield, the spirit of Satanism, the spirit of Jezebel, and we break its power. We break its power. We break the curse of immorality over this city. Witchcraft, we break your power. There's more registered witches than ministers. We break that power. And in the name of Jesus, we do spiritual warfare and we pray as we humble ourselves that there'll be a move of God in Sheffield from the north to the south, from the east to the west. The revival will break out on this message. Folks watching around the world, revival will break out at a greater level, which will come in awakening. What you did with Azusa Street, with Seymour. Where 20 million people got saved. You'll do it again right here in Sheffield. Because it's perennial. It'll never run out. Study the history books. You'll find out that Evan Roberts got offended from criticism. And hid. And it stopped. And Seymour did not deal with the spirit of Jezebel and witchcraft. And it stopped. I want you to lift your hands now and say, Father, I never want it to stop. I don't care how much I'm criticized. I don't care how much uh, folks are speaking against me. I will never stop. I will seek your face. I will pray. I will keep going. I'm not looking for the applause of men anyway. I'm not looking for the appraisal of men anyway. I'm waiting for the one word on that day. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy. Promotion time has come. Promotion time has come. Well, on the third day in Uruguay, sure enough, I lost my voice. They said Luis Palau lost his voice on the third day. How many of you know Luis Palau? He lost his voice on the third day. So the pastor, there was about a hundred people in that crusade. He said, you got to cancel. Hermano, no tiene voz. Hermano, no tiene voz. I said, I know, I know, I got no voice. I said, but we're not. I said, we're not canceling. He said, but how? I said, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. The fourth night I stood on the platform. My voice returned. I preached for seven nights. But on the fourth night, a, a, a colectivo, a bus came by. And there was a man on there with a gun about to blow his brains out. And this is what I said under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I said, don't kill yourself. I've had lots of people under the spirit of suicide come to my meeting, shake violently, fall under the power of God and get saved. Powerful. And I said, don't kill yourself. Come to Jesus. He started shaking on the bus. That's the power of God. 
He came off the bus. He ran. He threw the gun on the platform. He got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Well, that crowd went from 100 to 5,000. Whilst I'm preaching to you right now, Jorge Marcus, Jorge, if you're listening, invite me back. He now has a church of maybe 25,000 souls in Montevideo, Uruguay. It's time for Sheffield. Hallelujah. 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 It's time for you and I. I hope my message today has done a little bit more than, 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 than uh, uh, touch your little entertainment spirit that you've come to church to see whether you like the preaching or whether you don't. Folks have, are coming to church today for all, all the wrong reasons. If you're not in church to give to God, worship God, seek God, then you're in the wrong church. Church is not an entertainment club. Church is not there to scratch your itch. You scratch my itch, I'll scratch yours. We'll all be scratching. Very nice. I like a good scratch. Church is not for a pastor to tell you nice little stories. True pastors will be preaching the word of God and challenging you to come out of sin and live a holy life and get on fire for God. Amen. I'm also a pastor. I don't preach too much in my church because after three meetings, they're on speed. And one American man, he said, well, you know, I'm in the pastoral ministry. I'm just a pastor. Well, what I, I just fuss on the woolies. I, I just get all the woolies and I just fuss on them. I just love all the woolies. Who knows the woolies are sheep? Well, I'm also a pastor and I'll fuss on the woolies. I'll hug every one of you. But I want to see some wool. I want to see some lambs. Just keep fussing on the woolies. Just fuss on them woolies. That's the problem with the church. We're all fussing on the woolies. Lift your hands and say, Father, it's time to weep between the porch and the altar. Listen, some of you could do with some fasting. I'm not being cruel, but you could do with it. Can I get an amen? It's about time you did something about the spirit of gluttony in your life. I mean, that's good preaching. I mean, listen, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, here. I'm not here to preach a message that you want to hear. I'm here to preach what God called me to preach under the anointing of the Spirit to join this man's vision apostolically to increase this church and birth a revival, birth an awakening. There are carriers of awakening and revival. If D. Mohan could fast under a tree in Chennai and there's now 30,000 souls saved and there's 17 multiple services around the clock, God can do it right here in Sheffield. He can do it in Watford. He can do it in Britain. He's just looking for those willing vessels. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. You'll eat the good of the land. After that revival in Uruguay, God began to use me around the world. I could relate story after story. Lift your hands. But it's time for the Lord to do it again. Do it again. Keep playing, don't stop. Do it again by your spirit. Come and do it again. Send the revival. Send the revival. We need. Touch my spirit. Cause me to fast and pray. Cause me to seek your face. And turn, and turn, and turn from my wicked ways. It's time, it's time, it's time. Lift your hands. Release. A revival spirit in this place. Bring an awakening in this place, oh Lord. As we lift our hands, we're no different to Evan Roberts. No different. 
to Catherine Kuhlman, no different to any other human that's ever lived on this earth, to Smith Wigglesworth that saw the dead raised. But we are not cessationists. We believe that if we put these four perennial truths into place, the acceleration according to the book of Amos is going to activate today. I haven't had time even to tell you of the outstanding miracles that I've been seeing every place I go. If you need a miracle today, lift your hand. If you need a miracle today, I, I, I tell you what, I, I have seen deaf ears pop open instantly I've seen I've seen crippled backs straighten up instantly I'm, wait, listen I've seen mir miracles are part of awakening they're part of the gospel and that's available today for you but the greatest miracle right now is for you to get a new heart for the Lord and while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and we're watching on that broadcast, even all around the world, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You say, Pastor Steve, can you pray for me this morning? Yes, I can. Pastor Steve, I, I need to come to Jesus. Yes, you do. I need a fresh touch of God. Yes, you do. I need to have the grace of obedience. It says in the book of Acts, and great grace was upon them. Great grace was upon them and fear came upon every soul. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God, nothing more and nothing less. This is the kind of preaching that we need in Britain today to start the revival, start the awakening. And I've said to Pastor Jim, I'm not going to turn my back on Britain. I'm going to believe God, that God can use someone like me for His glory never forget Nancy Dykes in Auckland, New Zealand when I was 18, 19 years of age in a Pentecostal meeting. She called me out of the crowd, a young man. And as I stood there, she fell on me and she breathed on me. And as she breathed on me, she prophesied and said, you will be an evangelist. You will move as an apostolic evangelist across, I didn't even know what it was, across the four corners of the earth. And she breathed on me. <laughs> And I was filled with the Holy Ghost and power. And from that day to this day, I haven't stopped. Paul preached all night and Eutychus fell out of the ceiling. Dropped dead in the preaching. Some of you are looking worried now. Chicken Nando time. When's he going to finish, man? Time to finish. I just did a meeting seven hours in Argentina in the city of Cordoba in the Sheraton Hotel. The pastor booked the biggest hotel, 1,500 people. It was packed. It was the longest meeting in the history of Argentina. Seven hours of glory. Nobody left. Nobody moved. God's glory came and birthed something. Even children stood in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. I love Sheffield. I, I feel it, man. I've got to work a little bit on my accents, but I feel it. You know what I mean? I'm, my God, man. I love nations. I love you. I don't know if you love me, but that doesn't matter. You need the joy of the Lord, some of you. Tell your face, it'll help. So it was down deep. Let's do way down deep. Some of you got it so deep it's gone to Australia. <laughs> You've been baptized with the Lord or baptized in lemon juice? You know, God's not interested in some legalistic, stiff bunch of religious. You know, you got like arthritis sitting on the seat, spiritual arthritis, constipation. Oh, I just lost a few people there. Most love me, but some of them are like, oh, I don't like him now. Because he's, he's challenging me now. Listen to Charles G. Finney. He said, if you want to see a revival, preach nice messages that don't affect anyone. Listen, I will preach messages from the Bible about revival, about awakening, about the saints coming in to the anointing of sanctification. Touch a neighbor, say, I'm saved. But are you sanctified? I'm saved, 
but are you sanctified? I like you, you know. You look like Nancy Dykes. I mean, you're nodding your head there. You look just like her. You do. I thought, my God, Nancy's back. I mean, she was 110 then. <laughs> hey, you come and breathe on me again. You've been the, the best person while I've been preaching the entire message. He's been nodding and some of you are there like, you know, like Mr. Bean with your wine gums. You got a bit of a laugh there. <laughs> One person so stiff, he finally... <laughs> little crease come on loosen up hold your hands up loosen up hold your hands up and say it's by grace my God I need grace I need grace I need grace you know what if you're a legalistic stiff nasty old religious person don't come near me and certainly don't go near any lost person because you're going to put them off you got spiritual halitosis I'm telling you just stay stay away but if you're full of the joy of the Lord lift your hands if you're full of the life of God lift your hands if you're full of the glory of God lift your hands and say Father energize me Father activate me Father I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that there will be an outstanding move of God in Sheffield Hallelujah. Why? Because the Word of God is supernatural in origin, eternal in duration, inexpressible in value, infinite in scope, regenerative in power, infallible in authority, universal in interest, personal in application, inspired in totality. Read it through, write it down, pray it in, work it out, pass it on, and birth the revival. Hallelujah. Now I'm preaching, amen. And you say, oh, I've had setbacks. Who hasn't? I've had more comebacks than Muhammad Dali. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Get up again. There's no victory in lying down. Get up again. Some of you say, oh. <laughs> I'm ready to throw the towel in. Well, who's, who's ever been there, man? God said to me, you throw the towel in, I'll throw it back at you. I said, wipe, wipe yourself down, Nancy. Whew. And have some of that. Get up again. Get up again. Go again. So, well, I, I tried. I tried. Triers are liars. You don't try. You receive. You don't, you receive and then the grace activates and you begin to do. Come on, show me your hands. Show me your hands. These hands are the hands of Jesus. Show me your feet. These feet are the feet of Jesus. You have the same ministry and mission as Christ. Oh, I could preach on. I've only just started. That's my introduction. I haven't come to, I haven't come to 33,000 simple points to get you going. Stand up with me. And Luke 4, 18. Put your arm around someone beside you. Get it into your spirit today. Begin to activate the Word of God. Somebody say, activate. Accelerate. Accumulate. The glory. Say, activate. Accelerate. Accumulate. The glory. Ah, uh, ah, uh, activate. Uh, yeah, yeah, accelerate. Ah, uh, ah, uh, accumulate. Well, uh, the God, I feel like something coming on. Activate it. Uh, you, know, you need to give me some funk in there. Activate it. Uh, accelerate it. Uh, accumulate it. Uh, the glory, the glory. Uh, activate it. Uh, accumulate it. Uh, accelerate it. Uh, the glory, 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 glory. See, I can do all that too. Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to do it again. God wants to do it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? From India, I preach in Dubai. Dubai, I come back. I preach in Watford. Wash my shirts. Love my wife. My children. And then my church says, Pastor, keep traveling. I go to Mexico, city of San Antonio, and then preach to Americans, praise God. 
The reason I can talk in so many accents is because you have to communicate the gospel in the language they understand. Amen. Put your arm around someone. Say Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You've done a great job, son. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. He's anointed me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Notice to the poor. That's half the problem. So many people have got their hands in their pocket. They need a conversion in the head. They need one in the heart and they need one in the pocket. Why? Because they're holding on to their money. Uh, they got it so tight, they're holding on. They need to learn to release that area of their lives. Can I get an amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Because Say, because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken hearted, to preach to Deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. There are six anointings in there, six. When I was 19, my pastor said, Steve, medit I meditated day and night, walked up and down in my room, prayed in the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So until that word became not just Logos, but rhema in my spirit. I don't need to be to get anointed. I am anointed. It's not arrogance. That's faith. I know wherever I go, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken hearted. You can do it too. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Right now we're in the presence of God and around about this time we're getting ready to finish and I will be available at the end because I know folks have got to shoot off to work. It's the same in my church, I understand. But heads are bowed right now. You say, Pastor Steve, I have no idea what you are preaching about. But I know this. I feel Jesus and I need Jesus. And you're not saved, you're religious. You're a pretender. Folks that attend church are pretenders. I know this is a very healthy church, but there's always people who attend and pretend. And you're backslidden. And you haven't fasted ever. You haven't given ever. And yet you proclaim to be saved. When you get to heaven, how empty-handed you will be. That faith without works is dead. Today the church is being, is being invaded with a false gospel, with a false message. We need the real gospel, the hot blood of Jesus flowing from the cross of Calvary. We need the gospel of the kingdom, repentance, repentance. We need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. We need the restoration of the book of we need all five ministries restored to the church. We need the sacrificial anointing that says, if any man had come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. You're not saved to do nothing. You're saved to serve humanity. Time's running out. I nearly died at 49 years of age. I'd preached in Hyderabad in India, a conference of 8,000 pastors, and I nearly died. They, I had nine bottles of blood taken out of me. I'll cut the story short. I had five days to live. I shook from head to foot. But I looked at my wife and I looked at my children and I said, I am not going to die. I will live and declare the works of God. They ran all kinds of tests on me. I couldn't even lift my arm. But I'm here to tell you, my Bible says Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Not not just for sins but for healing miracles as well and here I am today almost 60 years of age I've never been in better shape I'm the oldest teenager in the world and I'll tell you what my God is the healer the savior the deliverer the baptizer in the Holy Ghost he's the soon and coming king do you know him do you know him Nancy do you know him it's time to proclaim him Don't get into all this seeker sensitive nonsense. Preach the gospel, the red hot gospel. The blood of Jesus. The holy blood of Jesus is what you need to break that addiction, son. To break that alcoholism. To break that addiction to porn. To break that addiction to homosexuality. To break that addiction to pornography. You need the blood of Jesus and a spirit of repentance. 
You don't need psychology and 40 counseling sessions, young man, if you're thinking of leaving your wife for the woman at the office. And that mistress under your bed, it's time you burned her. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Say, Pastor, I want Jesus. This is the most important part of what I do all around. The, I see hundreds coming on the altars. Hundreds, hundreds, I, hundreds. I need to come back to Sheffield and preach a three-night crusade. Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds on the altars. So the university students can be set free from Jezebel. Set free from Satanism and witchcraft. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You say, Pastor Steve, pray for me. I want Jesus to save me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be forgiven. I want my sins forgiven. I want to go to heaven. I was 19 when I got saved and gave my heart to Jesus. If that's you, just lift your hand right now and I'll pray for you. Where are you? God bless you. God bless you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Say, pray for me. Keep your, keep your head bowed. Who's here today? Lift your hands. Lift your hand. Say, I want Jesus to set me free. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Lift your hands. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over. God bless you. God, God. Listen, just lift your hand. I'm not asking you to, to do anything other than lift as a sign. Not to me, but to God. That God wants to come into your life, young man. God wants to set you free. Watching on the broadcast, you can do it in your front room. You can do it. Just lift your hand. Say, Jesus, come. Save me, Jesus. And he will. There's hands all over. Secondly, I'm going to pray for those that want to receive a miracle. My altar calls become incredible. They, be, they become like maternity wards. Because everything can happen on the altar call. You might need a miracle in your body. My next door neighbor had actually died in a hospital bed. And I went and prayed for him and God raised him from the dead. So if you need a miracle, I'm here. I know someone that does them like that. If you're deaf in your ears, I'll pray your ears will open. If you've got a crippled back, I'll pray your back will straighten up. Yesterday we had all kinds of miracles. Miracles are normal. I see them every meeting I do. But here's what I really want to get to. Your heart. How many of you want to give your heart to the Lord this morning? To become a revival instrument, a revival warrior. And you will fast and pray. Oh, I don't enjoy fasting. I don't enjoy it. I'm a chef by trade. This is the worst city in the world to be in and fasting. Because it has some of the best food in the world. But it's a sacrifice I will make to be a carrier of the apostolic glory. Can I get an amen? How many of you, as we conclude, and we're still in good time, say, Pastor Steve, I'm going to repent and I'm going to obey the word of God today and I'm going to get back into the closet of prayer. I'm going to get back into corporate prayer. I know you just fasted 21 days. You say, oh my God, we've got to do another 21. Listen, if you think it was tough, Moses went back to back for 80 days. And who's here now who says, Pastor Steve, I'm going to repent and obey the word of God. And I'm going to become a revival. I want to become a revival instrument. That's a different message. It's not who wants to be blessed, who wants a big house, a big car. I'm going to ask you who wants to put their life on the altar to become a revival instrument for, for the move of God in Sheffield. Let me see. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, hands all over. Come, come down. As you're coming, come down. If you came for salvation, come down. You need a miracle, give them a clap as they're coming. Hands, hands that were raised, come, come. Give them a big clap as they're coming. Just line up across the front. I'm going to pray for every one of you. Come on, a big clap, folks. This is amazing. Just lift those up and put those there. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. Come on, give a clap to the Lord. This is amazing. Come on, this is great stuff. God is doing great stuff. Jesus. 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 Stretch out your hands. Those of you that are in the, in the, in the seats, just stretch your hands to the front. 
God is going to do miracles in this place. God is going to do miracles in this place. Miracles, miracles, miracles. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. Many of you have come from other nations, but God has brought you to this city because He wants to birth the greatest move of God through you in your entire ministry. There's been many times when I've said, Lord, you saved me again at 49 years of age for a reason. I believe this, my best days have not even come and neither have yours. And I'm going to pray a very special prayer and then I'm going to lay hands on those that need a miracle and a touch of God and I'm going to hand over to pastor and then he can uh, release those who need to go but I'll stay. But as your hands are lifted right now, watching on that broadcast around the world, the Bible says whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be, will be, will be, will be, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Krishna, not New Age, not syncretism, not humanism, not psychology. The name of Jesus. Lift your hands and pray with me. If you want to get saved and pray this with me on the broadcast. Are you ready? Pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I call upon Jesus. Jesus, save me. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, deliver me and fill me with your Holy Ghost. I turn from sin, I turn to you, and I receive you right now into my heart, into my life, into my soul, into my marriage, into my ministry, into my money, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now secondly, everybody lift your hands. And I want to pray for the release of the revival, awakening, anointing. God has spoken a word to me. I am convinced that the activation of that word is happening now. Are you ready? Lift your hands and say, Father, the plowman shall overtake the reaper activate in me accelerate in me the glory of God baptize me afresh with the Holy Ghost to pray in the spirit to fast to seek your face to turn from wicked ways Lord I want to become a warrior a winner a worshiper a watchman a worker sanctify me father I thank you that I'm saved and by grace I'm sanctified I'm set apart sealed by the blood of Jesus to soar like an eagle and I receive the touch of God. Now I'm going to uh, stay on this altar call and, and pray. When this happened in uh, South Africa, Pastor Jim, it happened in South Africa. The, the first service, they did multiple services. It went on for hours. Now, I, I'm not prophesying that, but I, I don't want to do sausage ministry, which is treat you like a sausage and then we go and, and have chicken nandos. I want to really pray for you. Can I get an amen? Amen. So I want you to lift your hands and stay in the front. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Jim so he could administrate whatever needs to happen. And then I'm going to stay here for you. Can I get an amen? Listen, I want to minister to you in the power of the Spirit. And I tell you this, I don't know if my preaching was any good. I don't know if I, what I've said makes sense. If, 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 if I'm speaking about the glorious majesty of Jesus, I've failed terribly. But I've done what I can. But I know this, what I carry in me is greater than what I've said. And if I can lay hands on you, just like Nancy Dykes laid hands on me, I'm telling you, Nancy Dykes, not some of the hot shots you hear about today, Nancy Dykes laid hands on me in Auckland, New Zealand, in a place called Oni Hunger. Gosh, she looks like you. Hallelujah. And you know what? By the glory of God, here I am today, 40 years later, 50 nations plus, 
So I want to tell you, Paul said, I long to come to you that I might impart some spiritual gift. You know what? He's, they said his bodily appearance was not great. They said he was bow-legged and, and quite uh, not attractive. Well, hallelujah. Maybe I'm like the Apostle Paul, slightly bow-legged and not attractive. But I know this, what I've got in me to give to you by the laying on of hands is far greater. So let's give a great hand to the Lord as Pastor Jim comes and administrates whatever's happening now.